I'm standing in front of one of the most magnificent structures in America, the Natchez Trace Parkway Bridge over historic US 96, right outside Franklin, Tennessee. This piece of design is an engineering masterpiece. I think it's fitting that I stand in front of this magnificent and lyrical structure and ask questions about a not particularly magnificent heavy-handed structure which is the Cal Poly Pomona University Library edition. I have a lot of questions about its structure and I have since the very beginning questions that I think are critical to having an understanding of how we ended up with this building and whether or not this is the building that we deserve for all the money that's being spent on it. All you have to do is take a look at these two buildings and you'll see that they're radically different styles, they're radically different types of structure, they have radically different uh, load capabilities. Uh, the existing university library is about as solid a structure as you'll find in Southern California. Uh, it's designed to hold the heavy, heavy weight of book stacks. The addition, an extremely light, flexible structure attached in a sort of L-shaped configuration wrapping around the existing building. And, and this is where the problems lie and this is where all the money in the structure is going and this is why we are getting so little for seventy to a hundred million dollars. It's this ridiculous wraparound scheme. I credit the architectural firm of Carrier Johnson and Associates for doing a good job with a really bad situation. Unfortunately they got stuck with a dean who's difficult to work with and had decided even before the first engineering reports came in, even before the most preliminary designs as to what kind of library we would end up with were conducted, before anything happened, Dean Schleifer made it clear that the only acceptable solution was a four or five story building that wrapped around the existing building and was connected on all the floors. And that's what we ended up with. Connecting these two very different buildings has created a lot of problems and has eaten up a lot of the money for this project. If we had gone with a more standard approach to the problem and built a freestanding building adjacent to the existing university library, with connections on certainly the ground floor and perhaps even some connections on other floors, we would have gotten a lot more for our money and I think we would have had a more beautiful building and, and I also believe that we would have had a safer built. I have some concerns about the seismic stability of the building. Uh, as you know, this L-shaped scheme where the new building wraps around the existing building is creating almost a thousand feet of seismic joinery in an L-shaped configuration which as far as I can tell is is pretty unique to any building in Southern California. Thousand feet of seismic joinery, space that can't be used for book stacks or student uh, space or anything like that because you can't do that sort of stuff on a connection between two buildings. I've never really seen a building like this. I think this has to be one for the Guinness Book of World Records. I mean the seismic connection here in an L shape for four floors on two sides has got to be unique and I can only imagine the amount of engineering that had to go into this L shaped addition. I mean you've got an extremely rigid building and an extremely light frame building that's set on radically different types of foundation coupled with the fact that there's some really problematic soil conditions at the University Library and a fault running directly behind the University Library building. What might happen in an earthquake? Nothing really like this anywhere. Sure, there's all sorts of buildings that have seismic connections, but never an L-shaped connection of two such radically different buildings. I am extremely worried about this building.